My name is Mustafa Daudi. I'm the uh, Vice President of Engineering of uh, SemiPro. Uh, I do a lot of traveling to do these kind of trainings and installing of the systems. Um, so the system uh, primary uh, goal is to put a device on, align it, put probe tips on, and then measure. So our devices, you can have any kind of stimuli. You can have uh, electrical, optical, any kind of pressure, whatever you need, and then you can take a measurement, any kind of measurement. So that's, that's the whole idea behind this, the system. Your system is a little bit special, obviously, because it does uh, 3,000 volts. Uh, we have a similar system that does 10,000 volts uh, for measuring uh, devices. And the reason, obviously, you know, it's because of the, all the high power stuff that's out there now and transferring from solar or wind energies to electrical energies. Um, the system itself, uh, I'm going to just describe the hardware, how uh, from the top to the bottom. We start with the, uh, the, the shield, basically. It's a, it's a light curtain, it's called. There's light that's emitted from this device, goes into this one, uh, this mirror, to that mirror, to that other mirror. And the guys here know how easy it is to set up. Because <laughs> the idea is, if you twist this or you twist the other one, then this signal doesn't get to the. This is the transmit. That's the receive. So if it doesn't get there, then you don't get these uh, uh, green lights. This is a sensitive part, so I think we should avoid touching yeah. any of this port. Yeah, but arms. what is the part? I, I didn't understand. Ah. Like, if you are measuring oh. the system at three thousand voltage, accidentally some person came in, you know. And goes like, oh, and this, what is this? Boom. Oh, okay. So what happens is what this one here does, it, it's all connected. So once it's green, uh -huh. then the measurement is on. Okay. So this whole s system is connected to uh, this device right here. And this one here will be connected to the 4200 or uh, the uh, B1500 in your case. So what happens, so what happens as soon as you put your head here, uh, your hand, the voltage drops to 40 volts on the on the tool so when you touch it you just get a little zap you don't get you don't yeah. die so it's a safety there yeah so there's two types of safeties either this one which is open air because now you could work on the system everything is open we also have a dark box which closes that has a door once you open the door the voltage drops automatically oh. until you close it uh, so that's the, the light curtain. Uh, on this side here, you can have, it's okay. You, even if you put your hand through here, mm -hmm. that's why we have the plexiglass. So nobody can put their hands through this area. The idea is you need an area where the cables go for measurements. So this is the blind spot exactly. for the laser coating. That, that window, because the laser won't travel in that direction. Yeah. Exactly. So if you take this... That's if, we, yeah. have us, we have the glass light in that space. If you take the glass out, then it's an issue, right? So this should not come out. And this is the interface plate that goes to the instrument. So the instrument will be on this side, and then you have the, uh, the, in, uh, the interface instrument. So on the instrument right now, you have uh, four uh, high voltage uh, connections, and you have coax and triax, which is low voltage. So the system can do both low voltage and, and high voltage. Uh, and it's set up for vertical devices and lateral devices. So the chuck also has a connection uh, a high voltage connection. So from the top, as you can see, we're routing the cables out this way because if you put the cables through uh, anywhere, it would uh, trigger the signal, obviously. Um, so to the maximum, just let's not touch any of the wires or the setup how it is now. We can move the probes alone and the sample, that's it. Yeah, the, the lowest microscope. I mean, I'll show you once okay. you start using the yeah. system. So the, the system uh, here uh, involves a camera mm -hmm. and a microscope. This is a 7 to 1 uh, zoom microscope. You also have the light that's coming out, mm -hmm. which is, comes to this control. So you can adjust the light or you can turn it off sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And you turn it on. Uh, you also have the motorized zoom option, which means you can zoom in and zoom out using this the system and we'll go over it a little bit mm -hmm. um, focus. yeah so the focus is right here so we we'll move up and down to oh, focus the system and this is manual correct mm -hmm. so it's manual focus you also have 
once you go down the system, you have an XY movement. The XY movement is coax. So this is a lock-in mechanism, uh -huh. these two, for X and Y. And this knob, it's the both no, of them. It's, no, X and y, it's X and Y. So once you get to a spot, you know, some people, they don't, you don't need to lock it. That's very important to lock when you have a uh, automation, fully automatic system. Because what happens is the system in fully automatic mode, it uses imaging to align. So if you move the microscope, you move your image. And now when it aligns, it aligns away from your probe needles. So what happens, you align your probe needles to your pad. And then you lock everything. So whenever it comes, it uses imaging. But in your case, it's not very critical. You can move it in X, Y. The Z movement for the microscope is just this one, is the focus. And then you can lock it. If you're in a good spot, usually in the middle, if you're doing a big wafer, you want the system to be in the middle so you can touch all the, the needles. This one here is uh, also uh, special for you guys because you need to put a special camera here that the professor said that he, he needed. So uh, to be able to have the camera here and be able to move this away and bring the camera in, we have this little unlocking knob. So when you have that camera, you can move it into place. When you have the camera, you can move it. Or you can go back and it just locks into the same spot. So that's the movement for the microscope itself. Then here comes the platen. This is the, the platen is what we call the area where you put all your probe needles or probe card. So if you have a probe card, sometimes people need more than four needles. So if you have your device and you want to, for example, test all these pads at the same time, and you know, you can orient your, uh, your device, uh, for example. Let's say it's oriented like this. And now you want to put your needles here, 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 and there, for example, to test everything because you're, you need speed. So in that case, instead of four manipulators, you need a probe card that has multiple needles that just goes down. And the system, it's, a, it's already equipped to this area here that opens. You can put a probe card holder. So in that case, we need only one probe for the probe card? No, you need a probe card holder, okay. which is a system that goes here. Then you can purchase from us. And you just put it down there. You put your probe card underneath. And you can also, it has a theta that can rotate. So you can align your probe card to your needles. You can imagine when you have your needles here, maybe they'll be off and you need to align them as well. So that mechanism comes with the probe card. So the probe cards will make all the manipulators to be on the same place so that the probes will be uh, placed in specific positions. Yeah, but they don't have... Good distance. But it's not the manipulators. It's just the probe needles. It's just the probe needles. It's a PCB board with many needles coming out. Okay. And, and then those needles will be connected to the manipulators, right? No, it will no. be connected to, like, let's say, a cable assembly. Oh, it's and a that different. Actually, it's a different exactly. setup, actually. Exactly. Oh, okay. and, but, but it's just a probe card holder and you can drop. So it's just an option. You don't have to buy many, many things mm. to, to be able to do that. Just keep that in mind okay. in case. Mm. If you need that. So the system is already equipped, you just need an accessory to put it in. Will it come with custom distance between the two probes? Correct. Okay. So for example, when you have your device, you okay. call the probe card manufacturer, okay. you say, hey, this is my device, this is the pitch, this is how far they need, okay. and they design one for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So nice. every, every device has a, a specific one. Okay. So the platen itself can move up and down, as you can see. So this is going down to contact, mm -hmm. and then you can bring it back up. The idea is if you have multiple needles already touching your device, but you need to move to a different device, you don't want to move these individually all at the same time. So what you do is you just raise everything up, you move your device to a certain to different position. I move too far. And then you can bring it back down. So that's the mechanism. It has a little indent here. As you can see, you can hear it. So that gets you very close because now your needles are in, in, in focus. And then you can bring it down to contact more. Um, right now, I'm going to just move this wedge so you can, so can see inside. This wedge is removable, this wedge here. 
the reason we put it in if somebody wants to put another manipulator for the signal here for example if you have some need to test also so you need these two but you, you want one coming this way then you can always put it there but if you don't you can put always you know all around the devices here and then this one here can be removed for easy access for the for the system some of the prober some of the probers out there from different companies they might they don't even have this they just have an opening like this so i'm going to set this one Whoa. Okay. Put it here. so we can see inside so uh, underneath the platen immediately comes the chuck chuck is a special one it's a high voltage and high high temperature so it heats up and cools as well. It uses air to cool. There's an air inlet here, which is going to be compressed air uh, coming from the system once you guys plumb it. Um, so I'm going to bring it a little bit forward so you guys can see. So as you can see, the chuck here has a triax layer. Are you guys familiar with triax? So, for example, uh, the difference between triax and coax. So, see this couple of arms here, and show you on the arms. <laughs> and triax, just to explain what the triax does. So, you see, triax has two two connections, a center conductor and a shield. A triax has three, a center conductor, a guard, and a shield. So this, is, this is, serves for uh, much uh, lower uh, noise measurements. So if you're doing low noise measurements, you use these. This one is just for regular measurements. The, your chuck is a triax, which means it needs also three layers. So as you can see in the triax, you have a, a conductor, an isolator, a conductor, an isolator. So in here, the same thing. As you can see here, the bottom is the conductor, which is the, the shield. And then you have an insulator. And then you have between the two, a very thin layer, which is the guard, then another insulator, then the top. So that connects to a triax cable that goes to the B1505. Uh, Uh, so that's the, 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 the chuck. So your device would go on top of the chuck, which means the bottom is the signal here. So if you want to bias it, you have to bias the back. So for example, when you're doing vertical measurement, so you have your needle on the top, and then the other signal goes through the bottom. But if you're doing lateral, you might want just to ground it or you know leave it floating, depends on your, device, uh, on your design. Uh, for connections in the back here, you will see there are three connections for vacuum. There is uh, 150 millimeters, which is the outer, and then 75, and then the middle. The middle is the part. So if you only have a small part you want to measure, you can just turn these three on, and then they would hold the part. So it's just three little holes here. So turning it on, where is this? Right here. So there's three on and off switches for the vacuum. Uh, the bottom layer is connected s straight to, uh, to the vacuum, so it's always on to hold the, everything down. Um, so that's the chuck itself. And the chuck, uh, between the chuck and this device here, we'll have a, a thermal uh, isolation. So there's a little uh, Altam uh, uh, separator. And then after that, you have these three... three uh, three uh, leveling mechanism. You see one screw here, one small, one big, one small, and then here one big, one small. So these are used if you have a, a, a large wafer and you want to go from one to the other. You don't want your device to be inclined like this. So you can use this to align it. And we have a manual to show you how to do that. It's basically one, one screw holds it down. This one pushes it up so you can level it. So, and the way to use it, what I would do is I use the, uh, the microscope itself. See, you can see right now it's 
in focus or you can focus it here so in that area so now if I go to this area see it's not in focus that means right? it's not uh, it's not level exactly so okay. what you would do is you would use these you go to these three different areas and I will do that before I leave okay. to make sure it's level mm. so once you have it in focus in all three areas that means it's level yeah. and all you do is you loosen these screws the big ones mm -hmm. and the small ones lifts it up right so you can imagine there's three three uh, three is it like one time adjustment or we have it's one time adjustment, one -time adjustment. Yeah. Oh. i will do it before i leave but sure. if yeah. for example yeah. you, sometimes you even put your device and it's clean and you want to adjust oh. it depends yeah. but i'm just showing you the way to do it so that's this called leveling mechanism so below the leveling mechanism as you can see here we have this is a gliding we'll call it a gliding stage the idea is if we could have a knob to move, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, but the problem is if you want to move from one side to the other, you're going to keep doing this for yeah. a long <laughs> time. Then you go there, then you want to go check you on the other side. <laughs> exactly. Or you can develop uh, some uh, carpal tunnel. So what we did is we did this, which means it's easy to move around everywhere. And then once you get to a point, obviously, let's say this is my area of of concern right here which my device is I can lock it there's this knob here and there's the similar knob on this side there's also one on this right so once you unlock both it's very easy to rotate but why we have three locks to lock a position so this is Y from this side this is X uh -huh. this side this is also Y okay. so, so the idea is if for example you're you're in this lane but you only want to move X. So Y is locked, and you could now move from one die to the other in X. Right? And then when you do this, then you can unlock this, and you can only move in Y if you need to. Mm -hmm. Even if you try to move it, it's locked. Okay. In, in, uh, right? Now, well, obviously, if you have this smaller die, you can't just do that. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you have a very small needle. So... That's it. So you have all these fine movements right here. So this one here, it moves very fine. You, can you see? Yeah. You so we're moving see. here. Now this one you could move. This side also has locks, just so you know. So for this fine movement, is there any limitation? So sometimes you usually you know, push a little bit hard, sometimes you know, it can't break or something. No. So uh, this is quite different, right? This moment is just one. This one. Then that's just yeah. No, this one here has uh, this. Well, the fine movement is uh, is very fine because it has a. Uh, you know, this is Z that I'm moving right now. You can see it going up and down. So you have X, you have Z, you have X, and you have Y. So this moves from one die to the other. Obviously, you know, if you run out of stage, you go to the center and you move the big movement. So we have what you call coarse movement, and it's fine adjust. You also have theta. So if you need to, if you have a wafer, and so this, this is theta right here. So theta, if it's unlocked, you can actually rotate it by hand. So Once this one is to, what is this? This is a, if you want to adjust how far you go in theta. So this is just a screw that stops this one. So if you just want small theta, okay, okay. what happens because sometimes you have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of cables coming out and stuff. You don't want somebody to kind of just rotate everything around. Mm -hmm. So this, and then once you get to a point, if you want to lock anything, you can lock it. There's also locking mechanisms in all the axes like this one, X, Y, and, and Z. So the Z right here, you can go up and down. And there's a lot of Z movement in the system. Yeah, you can see it's going out of focus. It's just fine movement. That's why it's called fine. Yeah, it's really small yeah. movement. But uh, why you are doing this fine movement, but it's shaking? Like why it is like? Well, because you know when when you touch something, obviously it's going to shake. So what happens is, once you get to a point where you really want, then you can use your needles this ones so you have well i'll talk about this later so now actually the table it's not an exact optical table we need to supply the compressor 
yeah. to mm -hmm. reduce this vibration that we see during the process. Correct. Yeah. So this is a vibration. So as we're going down, now you saw that there's a you know leveling mechanism, a fine movement, a coarse movement, and now a table. All our system come on uh, on this type of table, not on a cast. And the reason is, a lot of people they have run experiments and they want to put some more stuff onto the system. So that's why we with the, with this you have holes everywhere. It's an M6 hole. You can just put lock anything you need for your experiments. So it makes the system very flexible. This is a. Uh, a vibration isolation table which means once you turn the system that uh, the you compressed air on mm -hmm. the system is going to flow mm -hmm. and now obviously make sure that you don't lean onto it because what happens the system adjusts automatically mm -hmm. you lean onto it mm -hmm. it's going to push back yeah. you let go it's going to come back down yeah. and now you have to watch out you know if you put your hand underneath or something like that just yeah. be careful of that because me too, sometimes when I'm doing this, you know, microscope or something, I start pushing down on the system. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is, everything is on the table. So even if you push down, the it probe needles are not going to damage That's your device. Idea, huh? Because it all moves together. Microscope, sometimes even the image you don't see. Because everything is floating together. Problem is, is when you do this. Intentionally. Yeah, the problem when you do that is that the vibration is not fine enough to adjust quick for that. So you might see, if you're in contact, you, you, you might scratch your device. So just be careful. Um, for the vibration isolation table, just so you know, there's a little red knob here for adjustment. So what happens is if the air comes up and you see that one side is pushing way up, making the system not level, there's this red knob here that you can adjust and that gives it more air or less air so you can see this area goes up or, for, or down so the idea is you have to make sure that it's in the middle so it's just floating under the system here there's a little shelf where you could put anything that you want um, and also there's the thermal chuck the thermal chuck is very easy to use right now it's at 25 degrees and we do have a USB uh, stick that, uh, you know, with help files and, you know, how to use it if you want to use a computer to control it and whatnot. So it's all there. And all you do is a touch screen. Once you touch it, you can just put in the temperature that you need. And then, okay. And then it's going to start. Now it's measuring and it's heating up. And the more it heats, the screen gets red. So once it's at temperature, it's going to be, see how it's, it's changing color? So if it's, uh, if it's on the red color, that means it's kind of, it's hot. Don't touch. Uh, this is one for heating the top surface? Correct. And uh, where is the sensor that is measuring this temperature sensor for this? It's all in there. It's all controlled. It's all in the system. It's not, it's all separate. It's all, uh, and you can see, go ahead. Yeah. And the resolution, as you can see, it's 0. 0, 0.1 degree, so it's very fine resolution. This is like actually, this chuck is not a single layer chuck, it's like multi layers, right? So it's like they have the sensor not at the top, they have the bottom, but they are calibrated to show this value. Exactly, so... Uh, so this is the actual temperature of the state? Yes. yes. And After it, giving some, for example, if it's 45 at the bottom, right? at the top it will be like 42 bit, it will show 42, not 45. Oh, okay, so, so, so it's calibrated one. So, okay. <coughs> And it's temperature. Yeah, so if you want to test it, you can just touch. Yeah, you have to check once oh. double <laughs> It's at 50 degrees, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the idea is try not, try not to use your, try to use gloves if, yeah, you're, yeah, if you're touching yeah. the, the chuck. <laughs> and like what he did, because see, you can see the mark right now. Yeah. And especially when you put like oil or something on it and then you heat it up. Oh, you okay, know, it yeah. would, so you use the uh, isopropyl to kind of clean it. Uh, and so on it, I believe it's up to 200 we do have systems that go to 300 to 400 but uh, the professor is also looking for something that goes up to 500 so we're looking at, at that as well for him so um, the the isolation table right now it's on wheels but you can also drop it 
so it sits on, on the leg. So if, if for some reason you really want to sit the system here and not to touch it anymore and whatnot, you can drop it right on the ground and uh, take it off the wheels. Right now it's off, on the wheels just for easy movement if you need to put it anywhere. Uh, any questions? So uh, f to control for, for the light, obviously, it's right here. But for the, this is a multi-axis control. Usually it's just a regular um, controller. But uh, right now it's one axis that's con that, that is being controlled. And that is um, for this right here. It's a motor that rotates the system automatically. So right now, the way it works is just, you know, you zoom in. As you can see, if you want to adjust the focus, you just use this guy to focus, or you can use the Z of the stage as well. What is this axis to? Nothing here. Okay. Because in the back, see, there's only oh, axis. If I connect this to axis 2, then I'll use this one. Um, so 58.4. I'm going to try this. So now if I go anywhere, right? I can go to. If we need to use access to, then we have to purchase the separate motor, right? Correct. Right? It's if you want, yeah, if you have another motor. Oh. But these are one, two, three, four, five presets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have your presets like this one here, it's set to 58.4, so you have a certain yeah. magnification. Maybe I want, want to be really low here. So instead of keep pushing, so I'm gonna. The way to record it, you click this oh. until it flickers. Once it flickers, now I could go from 58.4 easily, okay, easily so to, like to 5. Define 5 exactly. positions at the same time. Exactly. So how to reset it? Hmm? How we can reset it? You uh, just go different. Again, press the button again. Exactly. So you go to like to... So for example, I want to reset it to 31. <coughs> oh, okay. That's it. So now it's not 58 anymore. So sure. this one is set to 47. This one to 29, and now this one here is to the full range. Okay. So it's that easy to use. Um, so what is this A and B? A or B? This is for the illumination. You don't have that option here. Oh, Usually, no sometimes you you have right through here going through the actual light, mm -hmm. oh. and it's also control. <laughs> the nice thing about that one, the problem is the microscope companies they're they're given less and less options, you know, for. Oh. Yeah, because before it was nice because you can adjust the light okay. and then you, you click a button and it, it gives you the light and the zoom. I see. So, so with this one here only has... Now we have a separate yeah, interface exactly, for that. Yeah, exactly, a separate interface for that. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the system uh, mechanically. What we're going to do now is just... Mo oh, the, basically the microscope here has a 2x objective, just so you know. You can also put a 10x objective if you really want even more zoom. The more zoom you get, the lower the uh, the working distance. So right. this it one here, exactly. So it will be closer. Then, uh, then in that case, is it because we are using like say 200, then is it? No, it's not. Then it's not, it's not, it's not, not at all. When you get to 300, 500, then and maybe. yeah, then even this becomes it, hot. It so that system will have cooling platen as well. Oh. So you'll have air going through the platen to cool it, because you don't want the system to be. Uh, uh, you know, when you touch this, you get burned. So that's why we cool it. But that's a, a different. Is there, is there any particular reason for using this this metal? If you need to have some other material, maybe. Oh, uh, metal is good because sometimes you want also to ground it for uh, less uh, en environment noise. But right now, the way we do it, we have aluminum bottom, and then we have a top plate, and this top plate is steel. And the reason we do this top plate is for this. Magnetic, fixture. magnetic, exactly. So we have magnetic fixtures. That's a good segue to do this. So now your needles uh, go onto a manipulator like this. So this manipulator here, it has X, Y, and Z. And the reason you could see, this is a semi-probe design. So you could see the X, Y, and Z. It's all in the same, uh, same uh, axis. The idea is you can put one next to the other. And then you can have all access. Some of the manipulators out there, you'll have Y here, X there. That's those are easy ones to put because you just take slide on top of the slide. But then you'll need to access it here, and you can't put two together. 
So this one here doesn't have a left or right. You can put it anywhere. So that's one. Two is you have multiple ways of putting. So when you have an arm like this, so it takes any of our arms. Let's um, get this guy. Yep. Yeah. So as you can see, arm just plugs right into the hole, and you can tighten it using the set screw, and that would tighten. You want. You don't want the triax, you want to just use a coax, it's the same thing, same interface. Uh, so you can put it here, 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 depends on the height of your device. For our double-sided prober, which tests the device from underneath, mm -hmm. we flip it. Now the needle faces up. Um, and as you can see here, there's a nice, nice little design. You see this little, uh, so it's not a, a complete circle, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a circle, what happens is this rotates. Okay. Free. Free. Yeah. So what happens is when you have a little hole here, that gives you a little edge in here. So it becomes one edge, two edge, and the set screw is a third edge. So it prevents rotation when you tighten it. So that's little design. And on top of this, multiple areas where you can put your uh, your probe, you also have this adjustment as well. So, so once. So you mean that if you measure the double side device? So the device will be suspended? What like do you this one will be Correct. So the way we have it is we have our, uh, this is, a, oh, it's called a, a double-sided prober. Mm -hmm. And you will have your stage, but here you will have like a yoke assembly going up and you put your wafer or device on the top. So you have access from the back and also from the top. So it's a special all system. The will be, all the holder will be there. The holder, it's either, if it's a wafer, it's going to be a holder a sort of like this. But if it's not a wafer, we can build a carrier. Okay. Like, if you have your devices like that, we will build a carrier with Around. a small little, exactly, exactly like yours. And you can have multiples. So you can have five, six, or 12, or, you know, the, a matrix, a matrix of devices. We hold them down either mechanically <coughs> with small little mm -hmm. connections, or if, you know, on the edges you have enough edge, you can use vacuum as well. But then, we will, like, uh, you, if we pro from the back, say, how we will see that it's pro A camera from the back. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one. So those are most, sometimes a lot of people use that system in optical. When they energize from the top, and they have a detector in the bottom to collect the light, to see which light. So, but just so you know. Um, another uh, SUS, uh, another uh, semi-probe design that is nice, usually when you have a magnetic manipulator and you have your needle like this, we can use this one. So if the magnet is on mm -hmm. and you do this, it snaps on you down, you know, because it's magnet, as soon as you get close, you would okay. do this. So if you have your needle, it might damage your device. Our system, our design, it could never be on. So as you can see, Oh, okay, there's always a gap when, when you place this. Uh, exactly. Port. So anytime you place it, it's gonna be not going to be on. Mm -hmm. The only time it's on, if there's a magnetic surface, mm -hmm. then it holds it. If you take it out, you try to turn it on, it would not turn on. Uh -huh. Because there's other designs where you have on and off mm -hmm. sliding. Yeah. Problem is, okay. it happened to me all the time, you forget. <laughs> yeah, you forget that it's on and you bring it in and you do this. Yeah. So with this one here, no. As soon as it comes off the surface, now it cannot be on. If you try to put it on, it would not. So it's just another safety for the device. So, and obviously you have your, uh, your movement, X, Y, and Z. See if we can uh, put this guy here. Is it X and Y? Hmm? X and Y? Yeah, we will check right here. Oh. I, 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 I keep forgetting. So the way I'm putting it in, so we can see my needle right there. So obviously this is Z. So we can see I'm moving this one. Even 
So we're moving this one, obviously, as you can see. Yes. And this, so this one moves it this way. This one moves it in and out. So this is the, well, X if it's this way. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, mean, this I, I think we don't need yeah. to know what to say, what we're going to say. It just moves other way around. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, we need to drop somehow. That, yeah, that, that, if something moves other way, then That's exactly what I do, is I go, oh, yeah. it's going to have to go to the other way. But, but the top is really the, the uh, orthogonal movement. Yeah. This one is the vertical, I would say, I mean the lateral, and yeah. this one is up and down. Uh, and that's it. I mean, once you have it like in the area where you need it. So let's prove it to one. Let's see. Okay. We'll prove it here. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. You can move it. Yeah, you just move the microscope in the correct area. Move it in the center. So. Yeah, so I mean, the only thing you have to do, and what you need to, uh, you know, once you go to contact, the only, the other thing that I need to caution about So the other thing to, to caution about is make sure that when you're in contact, your platen is in the bottom position. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is you, you know, so right now when you move up, out of contact, come back, you're in contact, if you need to adjust it a little bit. Because what happens is, uh, just wanna now it is damaging the. Right? Now I'm going down. <coughs> yeah, maybe metal thickness is too low. Hmm? <coughs> So what happens is sometimes what ha you know obviously you know the issue is if you're staying up here and you go to contact, somebody comes in and brings it more down, it will damage. then it'll be really you know damaging for the wafer. So what we will do obviously before the uh, key site guys come in, I'm going to put all the needles yeah. together, and just to show you something here also, uh, how to put the needle in. So as you can see, if you I don't know if you can see the, on this one, or maybe on any arm, we can take a look at this one also, okay, sure. and the tip. Mm -hmm. So here, if you want to take a look, so in the tip it has two holes on the top, and then one straight in. So what that does, it gives you two angles for the needle, either 45 or 30 degrees. So. Okay. So it gives you the needle uh, placement okay. that you want. Or you can sometimes, what happens is you buy the needles that are already bent. Okay. And then all you have to do is put them yeah. in directly. Okay. So, so I'm going to take one the of the needles. One, right? Yeah. So once we have those, take them. So we have put these two holes, right? We have these two holes here. And yeah, we can so also insert through this one also, right? Yeah. So that one is... You can bend it yourself and then you can just put it in. And I'll show you here. That is the tweezer is okay? Mm? That way I think uh, with it, mm. that, can you take the tweezer, the black one? Yes. I think the black one may work. Let's try this guy. Mm. So the needles, as you can see here, there's a collet that moves in mm -hmm. and out. So out it opens, in, so it closes. Mm -hmm. So one way of putting the needle is right through the middle, like this, if you want to. So that's one angle. So now it's open and you have to close it. Yeah, so you do this and then it closes. Okay. And 
the other way obviously is to go through one of those holes the one at the bottom hmm? the one in the bottom yeah so okay. so you can have that for an angle or this angle so you can see this is shallower angle for the needle and then you just close it and this is for adjusting up and down So that it's far, I'm going to just push it a little further down. Let's see. As I see right now, one thing that I noticed is the camera is rotated 180 degrees. Because yeah. if I move X this way, I'm moving the sample this way. Oh. It's moving that way. <laughs> right? I see. Yeah. So what we need to do is rotate the camera. So how it's got to do it? No, while installation. Oh, okay. I did it on purpose just to show you guys. <laughs> 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 see? That's how to do this. The, how that's how you do the training. But escape the yeah, mm -hmm. just rotate the camera, okay. right? And I'm going to lock it down. So now for changing the this 10x, I assume. Yeah. Okay. So we have to see like how we can change it, right? Yeah, let me show you. So camera back is the correct position now. Now if I move X, it's moving the right way. Right. The reason I noticed is I'm putting the needle from this corner and, it's coming and it came right. in from the top corner. So I'm like, oh yeah. Um, the problem is in semi-automatic system when you have a semi-automatic and you see, oh, the stage is moving the wrong way. Maybe it's, a, it's the yeah. firmware, maybe it's the software, oh, you know, but it is okay, just the camera. Yeah, but it's just the camera, you know, <laughs> the rotation. Um, Oh, your question was uh, to uh, to change the op yeah. the optics. So this is the lower zoom, as you can see. One thing with the optics is you can move it out of the way, just so you know. You can move it anywhere you want and lock it down. So if you're working on your device, okay, so you can have an open area and then you can bring it back. Just to show you guys. So this is the lower lens. This is, we call it, it's a 2x lens, and uh, it has a l much larger working distance. That's why we like to use it all. Most of the customers like to use that. So now, as you can see here, to protect the objectives, that's where it goes, mm -hmm. you know, in here. This is the adapter for the objective. out of the way and then if everything works well you should go right in <laughs> uh oh oh god any colors no no it's fine it's fine we just try to see i think it's i think we have to adjust this middle oops that's what you don't do. And you don't drop it like that. No. This is just the adapter. This sometimes you have to have it really nice and square before you can put it in. Maybe we can move the needles away. I will take a look at it. So this one here. Maybe the adapter. Yeah, I just have to take a look at the adapter. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at like this one. There might be a number on the adapter, right? To confirm which size yeah. is it. 
I'll take a look at it because what I'm, I'm going to just uh, make sure that this one is done before we leave. The numbers are different, right? Yeah, so this one is a 2x objective, but this one is just an adapter, there's nothing in it. Uh, how to, to know like which size of the outer diameter we have? Like them, these numbers. It's the same, see this one here is the same. Okay. So that's what goes in, mm -hmm. right? So this should go right in too. Just uh, yeah, this one is just yeah. You just have to almost, almost here. Yeah. I'll try, but it's the same, the same uh, diameter, so it should go right in. I'll make sure I place it before I go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have to take some time. Yeah. yeah, it's just a little bit to put it in. Uh, any other questions? Still works. Oh, now it's <laughs> okay. And then this one is for low voltage and this is for high voltage yeah this is high voltage it's obviously they have a big uh, much bigger connector like this so you know these low voltage are the top ones triax and coax yeah, we have given the label so here. how many for high voltage how many probe arm we need i think you guys have four yeah. but for measurements if you're doing lateral movement you only need two if you if you're doing vertical you only need one Yes. And uh, the gate usually is a low voltage it's one. A low voltage. But uh, key sight when they come in mm. this afternoon, they will go over that to show you exactly what uh, what's needed. So above one is triax and the second one is triax. Yeah, this is triax and the second one here is coax. So yeah, four triax, four coax. And, uh, and this one here just goes through. So mm. if you really, if, if you want to just take this one, like this one is really long, this one, mm -hmm. you can just make it go through straight to the instrument. Okay, yeah. that's pretty much it. If you guys, somebody wants to play with the system a little bit. Hopefully not with the needles, needles we don't have <laughs> Yeah. And by the way, Mustafa, how to clean the, these high voltage needles in case if there is some... Uh, like isopropyl is one way. Okay. Sometimes uh, what I do is I take just, if you take a piece of paper okay. and just tear it under the microscope, it's like a brush. Okay. And you can just wipe it down, uh -huh. you know. That's what I use sometimes. If I see yeah, some particles or something, I just tear it, and then at the end of it, it really looks like a brush underneath, mm -hmm. and you just. Like, but you know, that's that's pretty much uh, how to clean it. Mm -hmm. IP, IP, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to maintain so phones in the measuring the vertical. You mean we, we don't need to put one probe <coughs> on the stage? We yeah, usually one probe on the top, uh -huh. probe and on the, stage. the stage is connected to yeah, this yeah. guy right here. See, as you can see, let me show you. Well, we, can, we have to move this yeah. probe up. Yeah, 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 we have to. Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of oh. still underneath. Oh, this cable, right? Yeah, exactly. So this cable here, as you can see, it's connected to the chuck. Yeah, so we don't need to put another probe on the stage, right? Yeah, no, you don't. It's already here, so it's you can go through grounded. this guy. It's already grounded. It's, it's, uh, it, three kilovolt it's not grounded right now. Right now it's floating. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to connect it to ground, you can ground it. Okay. You know through the instrument if you want to just ground it by yourself you can just ground it also you see these little holes here mm -hmm. you can just put little I see, I see. cable or screw and or you can just put a banana plug here and then you can but ground it. But I think it. Uh, this chuck can be used only for a 3 kilovolt measurement drain terminal because it's default connected to the 3 kilovolt cable. But if you want to just leave that floating mm -hmm. <coughs> and just use a banana plug um, an alligator clip or something and ground it yourself you can like let's say i'm just doing low level measurements mm -hmm. i'm not doing really high voltage measurement mm -hmm. but i need this to be grounded yeah. so if you don't have this interface to ground it okay. you can just use any kind of cable and ground it you mm -hmm. know what i mean like a alligator clip connect it here and then you can just go to ground oh. right okay. because this will be open okay. not connected to anything yeah. Obviously, you have to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. so if how about having a separate needle for that? 
separate needle and connect to the chuck? You can. The only the only issue with the needle on the chuck is if you have your devices. Yeah. I mean, right now for you guys, you only have one small piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have a big wafer okay. and your needle is on the chuck, as soon as you move to the next device, okay. your needle will be on your chuck on some place. You it know. Will scratch. Exactly. So why it's easier to just, you know, put a, you know, a alligator clip or okay. maybe a cable through here and then you can connect it and then it moves. So it doesn't, you don't have to okay. waste one needle yeah. or maybe have it touch your device and scratch it. Mm. I think most people are using small samples. I think we can put a needle and... Uh, yeah, if you want to do that, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can. Case, you need to be buyers, you need one needle. Right? <coughs> yeah, we need it, yes. So you need to need it for about a yeah. chunk. Yeah, we will plan accordingly, but I mean, it's rare to see wafer scale measurements. Yeah. In our group. Yeah, if it's, uh, if it's just devices, yeah, you can... But, uh, you know, what I'm doing is I explain the whole system. And obviously, when you have your devices, you can do whatever you need, you know, to make sure that the, the, the measurements work. The system will be okay. Yep. And if something doesn't work, it's you, not the, the, the system. <laughs> okay. For sure, we are we would <laughs> All right. Cool. And if you have any more questions, ask him. <laughs> <laughs> now he's escaping. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. Yeah. So the one setup we are missing is the compressed air, right? So I compressed air and vacuum. vacuum. So it's just so those two. Out yeah, I sh and we labeled them, right? Yeah. So all you have to do is once uh, the guy comes in to plumb it, you just connect those two, and that's it. So next, what we'll do is, you know, just between us, we'll, I'll, I'm going to go over the list of the stuff that you ordered, make sure it's here, so we're not also missing we anything. we have to put a list of accessories that is left over, right? So if there's anything... Maintenance and everything, we have to use some probes, tips and everything. Yeah, we, we can discuss so we that can discuss on the side, yeah, sure. no problem. Any doubts? Um, anyone is having any doubts? Everybody is an expert? Who is the short key dot people? Uh, Jose? Yeah. Any doubts? No, I mean like, ah, this one, how much time you, so for example, you reach to 20 degrees, then how do you lower to 25, yep. and how much it takes? Uh, the, so I could, you can just again touch it, mm -hmm. and you can just do 25. There is 5 right there. So now it starts cooling down. Because, because there's, it will take some time because there's no air. Yeah, there mm -hmm. no if you have air connected, as soon as it starts cooling down, it, it takes and air how do and you it turn on the air? Well, he's, he's, he's going to connect the air to okay, it, okay. <laughs> so it will be connected all the time. And as soon as you start cooling down, it, 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 it brings the air. Once we connect the compressed air, we can test it and see like how yeah. fast it will cool And it's going to go, yeah, it goes pretty quick. And also, if you have cool air, it goes fa much faster, <laughs> you know, down. If you have hot air, obviously it's not. Like right now, it's cooling off. Uh, but it's slowly, right? But if I do this, you know, it might cool off quickly. Okay. But it just depends on the environment. I think the train is done, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is all it. It's a manual system, so it's pretty simple. If it was semi-automatic, then I'll have to go through the software, how to use all the applications, how to communicate to it remotely. Okay. Uh, or you write your own software to to run it, but because you guys are doing just device measurements, it's the manual is sufficient. Yeah, you're welcome.